This is my process improvement to help make the bottom shelf of the freeze drying unit a little bit more efficient. So you're going to need some heavy duty aluminum foil and we're probably going to need a little bit over three feet. Take your foil and just line it up with your with the shelves here because you want to be able to fold the end of the shelf the foil to meet the width of the shelf here. And that's going to be about maybe an inch and a half. Now, I've done this several times in the past and it does not hinder the sublimation at all. With aluminum foil there is a dull side that will absorb energy. There's a shiny side that will reflect. So we want the shiny side out. So in this case we want the shiny side down. So flip that over. Then we want to place this about halfway on our foil. Then we're going to take this end piece here and go through the second shelf. Okay, just like so. And we want to roll this over on its side. Take, we're going to take all this material and we're just going to roll it up against itself. And flatten it out just like that. So now what this will end up doing not only is it going to retain some of the heat in this bottom shelf and heat the bottom shelf up a little bit to compete with the top three shelves, but with the foil on the side, with those individuals who freeze dry in areas with high humidity, it's going to keep that ice buildup inside the chamber from coming in to the bottom shelf. Now, one of the things you can see what Harvest Right has done in the past if they've laid some of this polypropylene uh, corrugated material, there's one layer here, but down here on the bottom, they actually put two layers basically to help insulate that bottom shelf away from the cold chamber. So try this out and keep record of, of your, your success or failures and see if it's a good idea for yourself. For me, it has worked very, very well. My freeze dryer has run for about five minutes and is sufficient, has sufficient vacuum to perform this test. So with the door closed, no food in the freeze dryer, with this valve closed, um, you just want to get your drain valve and put that into some water. Now I'm just using uh, colored water to make it a little bit easier to see. And with you do not want to have is water being drawn up through your drain valve. If you have water being drawn up through your drain valve, that means your valve is not holding and is leaking vacuum. Now, the ice that is built up inside your freeze dryer has a 
pH level of acidity and that pH level can corrode the chrome ball valve inside here and if that gets corroded enough it will actually will leak vacuum and this is one of the places where you need to test to avoid frustration when you get an inadequate vacuum uh, reading a vacuum message on your freeze dryer and you've checked your door sill and you've checked your pump and you've checked everything else but one thing you do need to check is your drain valve my next tip deals with the philtrum now if you don't know what the philtrum is the philtrum is this little teeny space right above your lip where that little bit of a divot is that space the philtrum is one of the most temperature sensitive uh, parts of your body it can sense heat and cold better than anywhere else and maybe that's the reason why we bring uh, potentially hot food near our lips to see if something may be too hot but one of my suggestions to do is if you're curious if whether or not your food is completely dry is just to take a bit of food and just lightly touch it to the top of your upper lip now I'm not suggesting that, suggesting to shove it up your nose and of course we want to be sanitary in everything we do but I figure hey how many germs are uh, transmitted by kissing and if you know if you have a, a heavy mustache and you have yesterday's dinner still in it you may not want to do it but all I'm suggesting is this part of the upper lip can sense cold better than anywhere else on your body so I would suggest when food comes out of the freeze dryer having clean hands you might just want to kind of run your fingers through the food on your tray and if you find anything that could be suspected as, as cool just lightly touch it up here if it's cold don't package it continue on give it a few more hours because moisture inside your packet is the worst thing you can do another thing that would be helpful to have for your vacuum freezing adventures would be a gram scale now the reason the gram scale is important is it'll help you calculate how much water to add back to your food for example one of the things I like to freeze dry is sloppy joe mix so I did this one just the other day and basically I hope you can read this here I weighed my trays with sloppy joe mix at 1823 grams and when I was done I weighed my trays again and my trays then weighed 1106 grams so basically the freeze drying cycle took out 716 grams of water so what I did is that this is one 716 grams of water so if I want to reconstitute my sloppy joe mix I need to put this amount of water back into my dried sloppy joe mix to bring it back to where it once was now the nice thing about this jar it has some indication markers right here which comes up to be three cups so out of that tray of sloppy joe mix the process removed three cups of water which is pretty impressive so by being able to weigh your food before and after it will tell you how much water you need to add to reconstitute it and I just write that number on my package so in the future when I want to use that food it's very easy to calculate it out without adding too little or too much water to it here's my chicken pad thai that I did back on April the 21st another little tip you can do is called the crunch test so I can take this and I can squeeze it and I can hear the food inside crunch and that's a good thing that's basically telling me that my food is nice and dry inside 
Now, a couple of years back when I did some strawberries, I did the same thing about a day later. I went to crunch it and it didn't crunch. It was, it felt really soft and mushy. And basically what happened is I ended up putting strawberries in the bag and sealing the bag, not realizing that some of the strawberries still had frost or ice or water inside the food. And what happened is this, that little bit of water reconstituted my package of strawberries and made them all mushy. And because they sat there for several weeks, they were spoiled. So if you are in doubt that something may be not quite dry enough and you didn't add extra time to it, I would suggest that if you don't, if you do that, to throw it into the freezer until you have an opportunity to put it back into the freeze dryer and to put it on final dry for a couple of hours. And now for something completely different. I just finished up my ham and potato soup and I have to say this soup was really, really good. It was so good I kind of had to do a little bit of a quality control taste here. But a thought came to me, came to me the other day as I was showing my grandkids about this science experiment. And, and if it works with a metal can, why can't it work with a Mylar bag? So today I'm going to show you the easiest way of vacuum sealing your Mylar bags without having to buy any additional equipment. So we're going to go ahead and package this food up. Now, I want to change your mindset a little bit. I started thinking about this and like everyone else, I've been using one gallon Mylar bags. So I have them all written, listed, you know, written out, ham and potato soup and today's date. But I thought in order to do this, it'll be better if I start using half gallon bags. And so I took a bunch of these bags, I basically I folded them in half, cut them down the center, and so I came up with half gallon bags. Okay, so we're going to put some of the ham and potato soup in half gallon bags, and we're going to put some in the one gallon bags, and then we're going to uh, vacuum seal them. Now, just for illustration purposes, I took one of the bags here, and I made a dotted line across the manufacturer's edge, and then I made a dotted line across the secondary seal that I'm going to make. And I have this little corner right here that says, keep clear. It's important for this process that this corner of the bag remains clear without any food underneath it. Because we need this to be nice and flat for this little thing to work. So I'll explain to that in a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and pack this up and I'll be right back with you. Okay, all the bags are filled, and we're going to go ahead and seal them. The way I prefer sealing my bags is to fold over the top, put your sealer right to the edge, go ahead and push it down, wait for it to stop, hold it there just for a minute so the seal can cool down. Now one of the reasons why I went to a half gallon bag is because I'm an empty nester. Our, my kids are all gone and married. And so to have a great whole bunch of food in one gallon bag may not be too convenient for me. But it seems to work out pretty good.
all my bags are filled and they're sealed. Now, I went ahead and put these markings on my one gallon bag and I did the same markings on my half gallon bag. Now, what we want to do, where we have the manufacturer's seal coming this way and the seal that I just made, the secondary seal comes this way, where these two lines intersect, we want to cut just to the orange side of this line. Just like that. What we want to do, we want to create a vent hole that will allow the air inside the bag to leave the bag and go into the freeze dryer. Same thing with here. Manufacturing seam, secondary seam. We're going to cut right where the two intersect, just off centered to allow and to make a little vent hole in the bag. So I'm going to do this with all my bags. Now, the reason I have this orange triangle and it says keep clear, you don't want any of the food in the bag to be up in this area because this area needs to be kept clear because this is where the vacuum force is going to seal the two sides of the bag together so it doesn't leak. So I snipped off the ends of all my bags. Now, I do have oxygen absorbers in all my bags. I will continue to use oxygen absorbers even though I'm going to vacuum pack all my bags. However, talking with the people at Harvest Right and Utah State University Agricultural College in their homemaking uh, college, they basically said that it would probably be an option with vacuum sealing that you may not want to use an oxygen absorber in the short run, but if you're going to be storing these for 20 years or longer, then you might want to. But one of the things they did say that you could probably step down in the size of an oxygen absorber. So I'm going to continue using a 300 cc on my gallons bags, but in my half gallon bags, I'm going to step down to a 100 cc oxygen absorber. So we're back out at the freeze dryer. And if you notice, I still have ice on my chamber walls. I'm not going to worry about defrosting the ice right now. And basically, I just let it melt. So at the end of the cycle, I just hit the no defrost selection. Now, the nice thing about these bags, these bags will now fit inside my freeze dryer rather well. Oh, that was a little bit tight. One of the problems you have with the gallon bags is you won't be able to do this with the gallon bag sizes. So this one which is a little bit tight. I'm just going to kind of smash that down just a little bit so it fits inside. Okay, we're going to go ahead, shut the door, close the valve. And I'm going to come up here to the function test. And I'm going to go ahead and hit vacuum. So I'm going to run this, say, for maybe one or two minutes. We're at two minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the vacuum, and I'm going to release the valve. And this is when the magic happens. And open the door. And as you can see, everything, all the air has been sucked out of these bags. So now I'm going to go ahead and take these bags. I'm just going to pinch the corner just a little bit just to kind of make sure the vacuum stays in there. And we're going to take these back into the kitchen and seal them up. Okay, we're back inside and we're just going to seal that corner up. So, how's that? Vacuum sealed and with our oxygen absorber inside and with most of the air that has been uh, vented out, 
these are going to last a long time. So, this is a half gallon version. Now, what about the one gallon bag? The one gallon bag will not fit into the shelves of the freeze dryer. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to just take about an hour or so to finish defrosting my freeze dryer and we're going to remove the shelf and then we'll take care of this guy. Okay, it's been about 40 minutes and the chamber is defrosted. I'm going to remove my fan out of there and we're going to remove the tray. And of course, all this is going to come down and fall in my bucket down there. That's how I defrost my chamber. Okay, so we're going to take this little red tab out and we're going to press on the plug. And we're going to take that out. And we're going to wipe down the tray. We're going to wipe down the chamber. And we're going to go ahead and put our bags in. Replace the gasket, put the wires in there. And we have. Okay, I went ahead and, and got some other bags I previously have done. So this is my pineapple, and as you can see, I've snipped off the top there. That's going to go inside, and I have my cabbage, and I have my sour cream, and I have my ham and potato soup. So, like what we talked about where the manufacturer's edge is and where my secondary sill is. Basically, we're just going to snip off that corner just to make a little bit of a vent for the air to escape. And that's going to go inside. And we're going to hit the vacuum. And we're going to give it two minutes. And we're going to go ahead and turn off the vacuum, open the valve, and we have one, two, three, and four. We're going to go ahead and take these inside and seal them up. Now, one of the problems and drawbacks with vacuum sealing is if you don't use a heavy duty bag, there's a good chance that if you're freeze drying something like meat or something that's going to have some sharp edges and you go to vacuum pack it and you have a very thin mylar bag, there's a chance that as the force is, is sucking all the air out, something sharp could go through the bag. These bags are fairly thick and I've never had a problem with uh, these type of mylar bags. The second problem is, is like this is ham and potato soup, this is sour cream, cabbage, pineapple. There's not a problem if these get smashed. Now the pineapple, uh, maybe so, but the cabbage, sour cream, the soup is not an issue. If I was doing my favorite vegetable, asparagus, and I wanted to keep the asparagus looking really nice, I'd either put it into a mason jar and store it that way, or I would just do it in, in a bag with an oxygen absorber. If I had asparagus in a bag like this and vacuum sealed it, when I'd open that asparagus up, it would be dust. So if you want anything to remain pristine, uh, for example, I have a lot of uh, sliced ham in really nice, nice pieces. Uh, vacuum sealing is going to break those pieces of nice ham into little teeny pieces. So that's something to consider when you do vacuum sealing. But anyway, vacuum sealing without having to buy all the extra equipment using your Harvest Right freeze dryer. Of course, you can do the same thing uh, and vacuum seal your mason jars in the Harvest Right 
freeze dryer also. I hope you enjoy this. It's something that is definitely uh, different, but I believe it's something that is definitely worthwhile to try. Thanks a lot. Subscribe if you can. Like me if you will. Thank you.